Hello, so today we're going to be doing a really loose woodcolour painting of this lovely fat fluffy cardinal bird. It's going to be kind of a study, we're going to be experimenting, we're going to be pushing paint around, we're going to be losing edges and we're going to try and bring that bird into focus by using as few hard edges as we can and leaving a lot of it very very indistinct and misty. I think it's a great technique um, it looks good at the end and it's also a great technique to practice what you really need to do when you're doing a painting. How many edges do you really need to define? Um, so it's great for simplification and it's fun too. So let's just start with a little bit of drawing. We're not going to define everything here because we are going to, we're not going to be painting inside the lines very much. Let's just put down a few marks to define where our bird is. And just so there's the back of his head here, and then his face will be kind of here, and his belly. And then the perch will need a bit of perch tail. So I'm just going to put in a few marks, trying to get that rough angle right. And his head will come down. Define the face a little bit. This black piece of the face is kind of important. Put his beak in. But we'll be crisping this up with paint where we need to. So he has got something in his beak, hasn't he? I don't know whether we'll be doing that. I'm just going to make that mostly beak. I'm going to put this eye in. It's kind of kind of far back here. Just a rough circle for his eye. And then the back of his head come out here okay comes round this is going to be mostly defined in paint and his belly round here very lightly drawing this in Making fatter than that. I do like a fat, fluffy bird. Then his wing probably will need to define this. Comes down and back of him. Then there's this perch here. You'll need a bit of perch. But this also will be quite loosely defined. Then a tail, and a bit of underside of this perch. I'm not drawing everything in, just want to know roughly where everything is. Then we'll go straight in with the paint. Okay, and some feet will need to go in here. I don't want to define these feet too crisply. I'm just doing the outlines of them. Just the important angles there. Comes across and then this leg comes out. Just a bit of knuckle. And this one comes in. Like so. Right, and I think we're pretty much. Do I need a bit of this bit headpiece up here? That comes just a bit of the, a few of the spikes. Yep, I think we've got 
the main outlines of our bird in there and I've just very lightly put in these back pieces because I'm going to want that to be very indistinct. Okay, right. Well, that's the drawing. Let's start with some paint. So, I'm going to be doing this in layers. And let's have a quick look at the light here. It's 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 a tricky one, this. I mean, there's, there's obviously some shadow on the front of his head. And there'll be some darker pieces down here. But the light is kind of... The wing is slightly darker. It's tricky to get the light, but the most the most difference between the light and shade is kind of on the side of his head and the side of his cheek. So we'll remember that. And we're going to be doing a lot of splotchy painting. So when we're splashing around, let's change that shape a little bit. Um, so I'm just defining. Just want to see that curve around a little bit here. Yeah. Gonna have to really do that in the paint. We want to start painting into the face because we want to keep that nice and crisp. We want that eye to be fairly crisp. So I've just got to remember: do not paint into the face too much. If you do a little bit, it's fine. Well, that's what didn't work, did it? Yeah, there we go. Right. So let's start, and we're going to start with some. We just go right in with the red. Um. And this red is a lovely red, it's one of my favourite colours and I'm going to use a fairly big, it's a size 12 round sable, this is an Escoda, Escoda Reserva brush which is my favourite sable brush. And this red, it's not, I have two reds on my palette, I have my orangey red and I have my pinkish red. I think it's somewhere between those two so I'm going to mix up a mix of my this is vermilion but cad red is is close and this is permanent rose and quinacridone red or alizarin at a pinch would be good for that right and it's a mixture between the two a little more i'm just going to put that on a swatch just to see what it looks like and we'll be mixing in water and probably some other other colours and doing some splashing. So we know roughly where the red needs to go. It's in its, in its head and his belly, a little bit on the tail, and we'll probably go into the, the wing as well because there's some there's some red in that wing. Right now I'm just gonna put red pretty much here and it's very sloshy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean my brush, perhaps it's got a bit of water on it, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to go right through those edges. I'm pushing the paint around, let it, if you, if you get some blossoms that's fine, I'm going straight through those edges. This is going to end up being very light, I'm go through those feet, and we can come back in on subsequent layers maybe even dot some water in there trying not to get hard edges as it goes into the background i'm washing my brush a lot almost every couple of strokes i'm going in and washing my brush right, a little bit in that head you'll be surprised as this dries back and we go into the subsequent layers how how um, light this dries. So a little bit, make sure I don't go into that eye. A bit here. And I can dot some colour in. I'm washing my brush. I'm just pulling these edges out into the background. Careful around that eye. Soften, soften it a little bit. Where I see a hard edge, take a wet brush and just move that paint out of the way actually that's red too let's go into his beak just a little bit this is going to be black so we can paint into that quite happily okay and it looks kind of a mess doesn't it but it's it's 
it will all turn out okay right now i'm trying to keep this fairly wet as i work into it because i'm probably going to go back in and while it's wet drop in some extra color and we're, we're only working with red at the moment and in a minute i think we'll go in and drop in maybe a bit of orange maybe a little bit of turquoise and i'm going to do some splattering this is wet enough no it's not and if it does go into the eye area a bit always take a bit of paper towel and lift some out and I'm going to take in my spray bottle just put in a bit of texture in there and I think I'm going to mix up a little bit now let's put in some I'm going to put in some cadmium orange in here there are some little orange pieces in there just want to pull that through no, I didn't put any on the tail, did I? The tail. And again, breaking up that long straight edge. Smooshing it around, keeping a damp brush. Trying to keep away from that eye area. I do want to lift a little bit. This is a very dry brush, pulling bits out here and there. All right, these hedges are becoming a little too harsh down here. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of a little bit of grey. I think so. It's my ultramarine and burnt sienna. Try and get the proportions right so it's kind of a neutral grey. Actually, I'm going to push it a little blue, just slightly more ultramarine. It's going to put a little bit of colour on this perch. And it's really just little dots just to indicate that it's there. And again, I'm going to go in and destroy all those edges. I'm trying not, if you see what I'm doing, I'm not going right back into the colour, certainly not at the moment. I'm kind of coaxing it out with that wet brush. I'm wetting the paper. Getting rid of all those hard edges. And so the paint that's already down there will flow into it. Now, I think I just want a little bit, I just want a little bit of colour on the paper down here. This will be very light when it's done. So looking at those hard edges, this is just a brush full of water taking out those hard edges. All right, okay. And if you've got some drips and stuff, I'm just going to pick those up. Looking back at it, Ooh, that's a bit hard around there. All that I was saying about not having a hard edge. I managed to get a hard edge. I need to do something in here. And this is kind of darker, isn't it? It's kind of a, a reddish brown. I'll take a bit of burnt sienna there. Add in a bit of my vermilion. Just to put a little bit of colour on this, this wing. And I'm not following the lines at all. I'm just putting some colour down, cleaning my brush, coming back in and coaxing those edges out so they're really soft. And we should be left with kind of a misty, a misty version of the bird. Let's lift a bit there. There's not much, 
not much I have no detail in him there's no edges there but where I see a bit of color in the photo I'm putting a bit of color down and then making every edge I can see soft and really be careful when I'm putting water down my brush is clean it's just water on there if you've got a brush with pigment on you'll just end up spreading the pigment all over the shop I'm getting a few blossoms here and there and I think I'm okay with this now, do I need to go further with this maybe we should push him further A bit of blue up here that should be wet so that it should still blend a little and it's not actually looking like the bird yet which is fine we've got the color in roughly the right place We have a few blossoms here and there, but I don't mind those. Everything's going to be painted over. I'm just going to put in a bit more red, I think. We can always intensify this later. Put a bit more in here. A bit more orange. I'm kind of playing with this at the moment. It's in later stages we'll start defining the edges again clean brush it's always a clean brush I'm, I'm washing my brush every few seconds or so as soon as it starts to get a bit of pigment in the bristles I'm dabbing some water on there I'm just going to get another little brush That wasn't very clean. Just a little bit of red sloshed around, I think. Just want to do a little bit of splashiness up there. Just put that brush away, and it obviously wasn't clean and bad, Michelle. I'm just thinking. I'm just pushing it out of the edges, I'm keeping a bit of an eye on how I want the colours to look on the paper. We're not going to do anything fancy with the background. It will just be basically what's down here. At the end, if it needs a bit more, a bit more sort of direction. Maybe a little more colour. Right. Okay. Soften those edges. Right. Well, that's that's the hard work done, pretty much. Um, I'm just going to put the video on pause. I'm going to let him dry. And then we'll come back in and we'll start trying to pull a few edges together so you can actually see the shape of the bird. Okay, so he's dried for a few minutes. He's not completely dry yet. And I was just standing back and looking at him and thinking, so what should we do next? My first my first thought was putting a bit of form into this. We, want to, we do want to make him look three-dimensional. But actually, I think we're going to put a bit of this face in. Um, I, I often leave the face to the end, you know, fairly uh, quite, a, quite a way through a painting. But I think with this kind of painting, we want to put a bit of definition in here because otherwise our temptation is going to be to try and define the rest of the body too much. And I want to leave that really, really loose. So let's put a bit of this face in. Now, I'm going to mix up a dark. So it's going to be ultramarine and a bit of burnt sienna. Fairly thick there, but that's too thick to paint with. You see, if I, I pull my brush through it 
it's it's leaving tracks so it's not going to flow well on the paper let me put more pigment in there i want it to flow but i want it to be thick enough that it's nice and dark when it goes down all right okay that i think would be just about right now i'm gonna to have to come in a little closer for this i'm gonna put regions little mark dabs of dark paint around the eye and the beak area but i'm not going to fill it in i'm just going to put just to find the eye a little bit little pieces of dark where there are hard edges so i need to go around this and i'm leaving bits of white paper in between and we're going to go back in just a little bit around this beak going to clean my brush and it's probably won't be dark enough I'm going to give afterwards it's fairly, it's fairly fairly dry brush I don't want the water to be splooshing all over the place I'm just using that damp brush kind of fill in the gaps where those darks are I probably need a bit more dark down here I have to wait for that then I'm going to soften these edges just a little bit so it's not a hard edge there. And I think that probably needs to be fairly crisp. A little softening just where the beak opens. And some softening around here. Actually, I think I'm going to put some red in here underneath this beak while it's still wet just to put a bit of colour bar down there I'm not going to put the bug in if we have a little bit of red here and it's, I'm placing bits of paint I'm washing my brush really quite well this is a clean damp brush just pulling over the edge of that colour and wetting the paper I'm going to let that bleed into the dark should probably define the eye whilst we're here I think leaving that very crisp around the eye if we want to go back in at the end and um, crisp that up we can just put a bit more dark in here and this will likely be the, the most crisply defined piece of the bird right now this eye it's a little I'm going to leave a little white sliver halo around the eye and also a little mark little area where the the highlight is this is too light but you don't need very much white paper to be left for this mix up a little more dark here this may well it may be the finished thing it may not be Let's have a look at this, go around slightly. Just so you can see that it brings out the eye of the bird. Right, okay. Now you can almost see that he's coming out of the mist here. So let's leave that bit for now. Let's let's look at the rest of him and see what he needs. Now what do we need to define? We need some more colour on, on his belly. There's this lovely headpiece which I think we'll need to put some edges in for. And then there's this wing as well. I'm going to keep around the head for now. 
we don't we're not really interested in the wing but it's a nice kind of counterbalance to his head so let's let's go back to our red again it's i'm using vermilion and permanent rose it's a fairly thick mix there i'm just going to put a little bit more water and i'm literally just dipping the tip of my my brush into there right i'm gonna define this side of his head little fingers down I'm going to use another brush for smoothing I think because I've got a load of pigment on my first brush and I don't want to waste it and I'm just going to soften can pull it out into the background. So it's softened for his tufts. I'm just going to look at that edge. I'm going to soften a little bit of it. We don't need very much of it to be defined. Okay, let's go back with a bit more red. So around the back of his eye, he's kind of, kind of, kind of red. And this won't be the final dark either. And in here, probably that slightly lighter. Clean damp brush soften those edges I'm just gonna pull that brush through that area I didn't paint and it'll just make it slightly lighter in value let's pull that edge out a little this one doesn't need to be hard and I think you can see when I'm doing this, it looks very free and easy and as though you've slopped all the paint on, but in practice it's quite a it's quite a slow measured way of painting and I kind of like that. I think I need a little edge here just to show the side of its side of his what would that be, a shoulder? I've got a little bit of dark that's bled into his beak. I don't really want that to lift that out. I need a bit more red in there when we come back. Okay. Right. I'm wondering whether to put a little bit of burnt sienna on the back of his. No, I'm going to leave that. Let's leave, let's leave the edges that we're not convinced we need yet. Let's soften this one. Right. A little red just under his beak where I took that colour out. There's a little bit here just defining the top beak from his bottom beak. Okay, that's just hooking out a little too much. Right, now let's do, 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 do. let's do some wing. We do need some more colour on here, but let's do some wing while we're here. Uh, his wing, I think we just really want to define this piece of the edge of his wing. And it's kind of, it's a reddish brown fairly dark so a bit of burnt sienna a little bit of ultramarine i want to keep it brown just to find a bit of that wing just want an edge to show there's a wing there but it's not It's not crisply 
it's not a crisp botanical painting is not what I need is it but it's not a uh, it's a kind of scientific illustrative drawing painting right let's show let's have a look at that now I think that's actually that's too defined that and I think it's too brown so I'm going to destroy quite a lot of that I've got a wet brush with water on I'm just pulling that colour out through that edge don't need very much of it at all yep I think that might be getting close I'm putting a bit of blue in here This is working wet and wet now, so I don't even need to soften my, my edges. Yeah, I think it's quite got the shape right here. Just a little bit of an edge. Do you want to keep him nice and that. And again, keeping these edges nice and soft. This is just water I'm putting over here. I don't want it to be defined by the edges. I'll keep that slightly sharp. Okay. No, I think he's gone a bit misshapen, but never mind. Let's put in his belly. I don't like that top. That was a mistake. Let's go back in with some water, try and rescue this. Right, let's have a go at the let's put a bit of red in for this tail actually because we didn't actually do that. A bit of red and there's a little bit of dark down here. Mix in a bit of cerulean blue because it goes kind of purplish. And again, soften all those edges. You really don't need much definition in a tail. Really, really kind of destroying this, but I do really like the effect you get of the paint on the paper this is really quite lovely nope, not enough okay again this is constantly looking around for these hard edges on the periphery that I don't like okay now all right let's let's have a go at this belly yeah i think it's, the, the color has bled out it's affecting my perception of um the shape of him let's put in some color i'm probably going to leave this but let's put in the red to beef up the shape of his belly he comes in, there's the feet down here. I'm just going to define it probably down to about there. A little bit up. Now I'm going to look back, soften the bits I want. It does, his, his bottom comes out here. So a bit of colour in there. 
and I know there's some white here which we probably don't need but I'm just looking at edges right now soften this edge top of his feet would be quite soft so it's basically just this edge here dab in some water okay actually I think I might put in a bit of foot I've got the shape of him not not quite how I wanted it but anyway some dark it's mostly burnt sienna a little bit of ultramarine just to take that punch out of that burnt sienna just some shapes on this foot and his leg I'm hoping that's wet enough And it will bleed a little bit if not I'm going to encourage it again soften I find if you define the feet too much they draw the eye and detract from the whole thing How's that looking? He's looking kind of tubby, isn't he? Still not sure about that wing, which is, a, yeah, I think I need, so I've just got enough. He's kind of appearing out of the mist now. But I need a little bit more colour here and there. And a little bit on his bottom. Just to show there's a bit of bird back here. I know there's darks in there. And these these kind of these markings are kind of yellow oakly I'm not I'm not going to put in it's blending into the perch which is okay a bit more red on that tail we want to be balanced and there is red in there and it, you can probably hear that my brush is being cleaned pretty much every couple of strokes you've got to be so careful not to pull the paint with your brush out into areas that you don't want it to be okay right I'm going to give him a little spritz with a spray bottle give him a bit of texture all right and now I'm going to put him on pause and let this dry and we're, we're very close to being done there's, there's not really that much more that needs to be done um i do want to see if i can maybe fix this wing but anyway let's put him on pause and let him dry okay and we're back i've just done a little bit of noodling and a bit of standing back and i think i've lost bit of the shape of his head he's actually got quite a, a stocky neck so I'm gonna put that in I'm gonna initially put that in with with our, our reds and see how that looks and I'm kind of pushing things now see how that looks Let's try and fluff his head up a little bit. Kind of just lost that shape a little bit, but I don't want to lose that shape. But I don't want to put in too much to make it look. Like a rigid hard line. To put in some more darks here. I'm going to try putting in some dark for this right side of his head. 
some fluency and a little bit of vermilion and a little bit of ultramarine here just have his front of his head in shadow and then softening that edge It's just a little bit of soft, just to take a little bit of that rigid hard line out. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. I'm going to put a little bit of that dark. Just on his shoulder. Oops, there's a big glob of paint there. Just on his shoulder. Get that kind of sh triangular shape of him in there. A bit more ultramarine to push it slightly. And I'm, I'm using really the, I'm not using the tip of my brush very much at all here. I kind of, I kind of like the way the water's flowed down from that part and really destroyed that edge. How does that look? Kind of a little more curve on it, I think. Right, and a bit more dark. I'm kind of going, I'm going around the painting. Putting in the darks where I think they need them. I'm going to see if I can move, move that wing in a little bit. This is quite dark paint. And I'm just really using the side of the brush to put that paint down a bit more dark in here probably needs a bit more in there I don't want to destroy the marks I've already got Maybe I do. I'm squinting pretty much constantly as I'm doing this. A bit of red, I think. Just, uh, that's not red. Just to add a bit of value in there. make sure that form is turned a little bit of smattering Soften those splatters a little bit. I don't want it. I want it to be slightly brushy, but not too brushy. Right, okay. Now, I mean, I think that is okay. I'm going to stand back and have a look. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's a bit of this bottom defined again. I'm having terrible trouble with bird bottoms. Get this red out. Kind of comes down here, doesn't it? Red in there, red up there. Clean brush just to join those two pieces together. 
just to make it look that's his, look like that's his bottom. I think maybe, maybe he's a little more joining. Okay, all right, let's put some of this perch in because it's quite dark, the perch. And it, well, I don't want it to be too dark, but I do want it to have sort of to counteract the the dark in the face right now. Ultramarine burnt sienna. I'm using very few colours in this, as if you note, it helps keep things unified. Just a little bit of crispness around that foot. I know there's all sorts of shimmery stuff on here, but I'm not doing an exact rendition of the perch. Just want it to look so there's something there. Not some dry the paint is drying. I don't want to lose some of this underneath edge. Everything is very indistinct. A little bit of crispness just where the light is hitting that the front of his claw. And I'm getting all sorts of blossoms and paint splatters. I'm wondering about this edge here. Is it too much? Take a bit out. Do some stuff. Soften these bits. Right, let's put a bit of definition in that tail. I can't even quite see where that tail is anymore. A slight hard edge there, which I don't want. Right, actually, while this is wet, a little bit of dark for the feet. It's quite dark in here. Soften all of that. A little bit of dark. too much yeah a few little lines at the end just to define the odd claw I think will be good there right this this leg is actually thicker than that isn't it I think he would benefit from having a slightly sturdier leg Right, let's look at this tail. 
If I do that, I'm just going to stand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm a lot happier than I was. And I think it's very close. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking if I do much more, I'm going to ruin it. And I don't want to ruin it. Less is definitely more. I think his tail, I think I drew his tail slightly too far over. So let's put in a bit of tail. And a little bit of purple. Bring some strewing blue into my mix to make some purple. Just for these bottom pieces. No, I don't think that worked actually. No, no. Okay. I think it should have been coming out more. Kind of lost the drawing on this, sadly. Let's make him a slightly fatter bottom. Okay, right. Gotta lose this edge a bit, not too much. We do want a little bit of definition there, but you can play with tails quite a lot. A little bit of dark under there because it's coming out from underneath his perch. Blend that into the perch itself. And I'm, I'm looking all the time for edges that I can lose yeah um, i'm kind of squinting back taking in the whole thing and thinking which is there is it is there an edge that's sticking out is there an edge that doesn't need to be there all right i think we're very close i'm almost tempted not to put in much more definition on those feet i mean he's, he's very loose Let's just go back to the face and see what we need to do there. I'm wondering, does he need more tufts? He probably does need a couple more tufts. Now, this could go horribly wrong, so... Kind of splayed my bristles out here. I'm going to get a little bit of splattering in. It's easy to overdo the splattering. Just touch him up a little bit, add a little bit of dark. It's got a little bit of dark of the tips. I'm hoping this won't. Ruin the effect. Soften that a little bit. Right, I think I should probably leave that bit. She says as she just puts in a little bit more. Okay, right. Yep, okay, I'm good with that. Just want a little more colour around just this bit. Just want to bring little pieces into focus. Maybe a little more red around and just a little bit. Just so that face is... 
defined. Right, now this base and eye does need some more dark in there. Let's put in the darks. Right, got my ultramarine and the burnt CNR. I don't think it needs much up here. I think underneath the beak needs just a little bit of gussying up. The little sharp edge is there. But I'm not colouring it in as such. Putting in little bits of dark and then I'll go back in with my softening brush. Nice clean brush, fairly dry this because I don't want to push I don't want to push the paint all over the shop. A little bit of shadow under there I think. And a little bit more colour. Now on top of his beak. I'm just gonna I'm gonna wet this slightly and get some dark and this is I am gonna use the tip just drop a little bit of dark just at the tip of his beak so it spans up that doesn't work very well does it Let's coax that in with a bit more colour Now he's got a curved beak, which I didn't want. Let's see, I should have stopped, shouldn't I? Really should have stopped. You should have stopped, for sure. Now this eye. Now the highlight isn't perfectly white. I'm going to leave just a sliver of white. Very light wash over that. And a little bit of dark around the other side. Soften that out. I'm getting a bit of glare on my paper, I can't see what's going on. Hoping that beak is dried. A little bit of dark just where the beaks meet. A bit more red in that. And soften that as it curves over the top of the beak. Hoping that should be enough. Yeah, let's let's go with that. I think I'm not overly happy with that bit, but it's gonna have to do. A little light wash of burnt in there. I've still got some little bits of paper poking through. Just want to take a little bit of glare off that. There we go. Now I'm gonna step back and see what he needs. Maybe taking too much of that highlight out, haven't I? Never mind. I'm tempted to I'm tempted to leave them. Um, I know we've got this kind of light piece across here which isn't describing the form of them. But actually I think I think oops, none of my camera's gone. Well, maybe that's a sign. There we go. Apologies about that. Well, I think that's probably a sign, isn't it? Yeah, 
out one last stand back, see if there are any other little bits of dark I want to go in. I'm thinking something on the perch and the tail. And I'm mixing up my dark against the burnt sienna ultramarine. I think this, this will be more in shadow. Makes too much though. A little bit here. Again, soften. I don't want those hard edges. A little bit more. I'm tempted to put in some more shadow under it's there isn't a lot of form describing this bird. We've got some on the face. It is, it is darker back there, but oh, oh, let's go crazy, shall we? What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> we can ruin it. A little bit of dark. Just it comes down here, doesn't it? Just a little bit to show that that piece of the bird is in shadow. Okay, well, I think. I think I'm done with them. I really like that bit of burnt sienna up there. Just put a little bit of cerulean over it just to take some of that punch out. I'm going to risk just adding in a little bit of white on that highlight. Let me look at it actually. No, I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. I think he's done. I think he's done. Let me um, can I zoom in on him a little bit. Just to show you the bulk of him. There you go. Yeah, I like it. He looks like a cardinal. A beautiful, nice, loose, wet watercolour effects on there. We do show a, a reasonable amount of form. Nice little splashiness. The feet aren't too heavily defined. I've just seen another bit I want to change. Oh, it's terrible this. I just want to join that to get that just a little bit. Okay. Okay, put him back to canvas cam. There he is. Okay. And I could noodle with this for a long time, but I'm not going to. But I hope you get the idea and I really encourage people to try this. It's it's a great technique, especially the first bits where you just you just push the paint here, there and everywhere. So um I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Of course there were some stressful bits in the middle as there always are. 
and um, I hope you come back and visit my website and subscribe and um, if I'm doing some live streams I'd love to see you and we can have a chat and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.